Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Life is Strange. In the last episode, we managed to get into the principal's office, and we didn't even have to blow up the door. In this timeline, at least. Now then, we are looking for files, I believe. Student files. We found one for Kate. We're looking for one on, I would assume, Rachel and Nathan. Those were the names that Chloe said. It looks like an oil painting spill. Awful. Mm. Yeah, it, it seems like the principal... I, I think Chloe put it best. He wants people to know, hey, look at all this fancy artwork. Aren't I loaded? But it's all... It, it's, he just has, like, no taste whatsoever. He bought it because it was expensive, not because it was good. Look at this pile. Um, I'm, I'm kind of umming and ahhing because I don't want to lock myself out of anything. Tumbleweeds. I, I seem to remember there being a picture in this area. You know what? Let me just... Um... Yes, the bird! Uh, I mean, Chloe drew attention to this. Uh, yeah, the bronze hawk. You're not so tacky up close. I mean, personally, I like that. Ah, yes. Chloe. Say hello to my little friend. Say good night to the bad guy. Nice, very nice. Excellent. Uh, excuse me. There we go. Uh, what? What this? That is so cool that my signature actually counted. Go, Miss Grant. Okay, dear Miss Grant. As principal of Blackwell Academy, it is my glad, happy, fortunate duty. He, you didn't settle on one, dude. Uh, it is my something to inform you that your petition to block the installation of a new surveillance system has received enough signatures for the school to reject. I think that could be reject. Uh, has received enough signatures for the school to reject the plan. It is not my policy to take sides in these matters, as we encourage the faculty and student body to participate in their school's operation. However, I did recognise the controversial nature of these cameras and shared your concern for possible invasions of privacy. Thank you for your passion and for inspiring Blackwell students to make their voices heard. I hope they will feel empowered by the outcome of your petition. Best, Principal Wells. Okay. Happy trails, David. Uh, from Raymond Wells to David Madsen, sent at some point. Oh, and there's the the photocopy of the, the picture Max took right there. Uh, dear Mr. Madsen, this is to inform you that until further notice, you are hereby placed on suspension as head of campus security. The recent events and allegations involving Kate Marsh have compromised your current status at Blackwell Academy until a full investigation has been completed. I personally regret this decision, but under the circumstance, it seems to be the only proper decision. I do hope that you understand, and if you wish to appeal this decision, you have 10 days to respond via email or letter. Sincerely, Principal Wells. Oh, I... I, I bet Max is just internally just fist pumping like, yes, take that, you dick. Oh, d I, here's the thing. This is, this is probably emboldening her for the whole like, oh, I don't need to get involved. I can just take pictures. You know, the fact that I didn't step in for Kate and that I took the picture instead, that's had really good results. The consequences of my actions were amazing. The fact that Kate was distressed at the time is probably really being diminished in Max's mind right now because ultimately, like, she she managed to get David suspended. Like, surely that's worth it at all, Max. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, there was nothing in here. Hello. Look everywhere, Max. 
There has to be some info in the student files. Chloe was saying something, but we'll, we will never know what. I guess being a bully is in the Prescott DNA. Hmm. From Sean Prescott to Raymond Wells, I would assume this is... Yeah, this has to be um, Nathan's dad. Principal Wells, it's come to my attention the Prescott family crest has been removed from the library wall for no apparent reason. This local historical crest is required as per the donation terms to the library, or the donation will be rescinded, among others for the school. Along with that, I understand that the tragic event involving Miss Marsh gives you pause, but I would suggest that cancelling Thursday's party is not conducive to the can-do spirit of Blackwell Academy. I expect you to reconsider and come to the same obvious conclusion. Thank you, Sean Prescott. What an asshat. This guy, he just exudes entitlement, my goodness. Flipping heck. Damn. Well, here are some student files. Hello? Weird. This asshole has a spotless record. Uh, that's probably because it's not real. Uh, Nathan Joshua Prescott, uh, address six something or other, he's another uh, Arcadia Bay native. He was born on August 29th, 1995. Oh, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, okay. Oh, he's, he's a Florida man, that's why he does the things he does. My goodness. Uh, yeah, he took the entrance exam in September. I'm, I'm struggling to read the handwriting up here. He has a GPA of 3.7. I doubt that. Nathan Prescott continues his family's historical legacy at Blackville Academy with a stellar academic record and a variety of extracurricular activities, including work with the Arcadia Bay Homeless Fund. Nathan is also popular with students and faculty. He stands as a proud representation of Blackville. This is the most humdrum... Like, there is no personality to this. With Kate, like, Kate's summary, I think, really, it, it suited her. Like, you know, they're talking about the Meals on Wheels thing that she did, how it got featured on local news, you know, that she was um a quiet but studious and had an amazing work ethic. You know, you can tell someone actually took the time to be like, okay, Kate Marsh, what is she up to? This, this is like, I've been paid to write something nice, but not necessarily anything eye-catching. Because like, if it had like a whole page of like, oh, he did this and this and this, then other people could, you know, say, uh, no, he didn't do that. He wasn't like that at all. This, it's, it's very neutral. It's very bland. This is, clearly Wells has been paid to just write something positive. This isn't, this isn't his real student information sheet. Like I'm not gonna read my own personal file. Oh, uh, Maxine Caulfield. All of these addresses are the exact same thing. Maybe this is the address of the school. I don't know. Uh, date of birth, September 21st, 1995. Uh, da -da -da. GPA 2.8, Max, you're slacking. Max, as she prefers to be called, is considered a quiet, attentive student with much potential for her photography. Her GPA fluctuates and she has acknowledged she should be doing better. Her teachers back up her quiet intelligence, though some complaints find her too nervous and nosy. Some faculty members would like Max to speak up more in class and be more assertive. Others would like her to be less so. But this is a common student suggestion rather than a spe rather than a specific recommendation student transfer information hmm. don't know what that's about uh, update despite some recent confrontations with blackwell security max showed herself to represent the very best of blackwell academy by stopping fellow student kate marsh from jumping off the dormitory roof today at this time, there is an ongoing police faculty investigation, but Max's heroism is undisputed. Okay. Mm. Wells had said in the very first episode when Max wouldn't tell him what she saw in the bathroom, he did say that there had been 
complaints. Not necessarily that there had been complaints, but that um, he had received reports that she was making trouble. Something along those lines. I find that... It's the nosy comment. Like, some, you know, some complain and, you know, they oh, she's too nervous. Like, she's got... She's probably a bit socially awkward, socially anxious. That's that's a stupid thing to complain about. But this, I I think that is a very fair complaint. If you have someone that is constantly like, hey, what are you doing? What you got there? Is that a pregnancy test on your floor? Let me look at it. Like, which, which Max did. She reversed it, but like, she did it. I, oh, Max. Max, what were you getting up to before we took control? This file is going to be so spotless, a projectile vomit. Mm. Victoria Marybeth Chase, uh, born August 14th, 1995, in Seattle, Washington. Yes, okay. A GPA 3.9. Brief summary. Victoria Chase is the gold standard for Blackwell Academy a student with a consistently high GPA and extracurricular activities that reflect her career goals in photography. Victoria also receives high marks from faculty for her devotion to the Vortex Club, among other organizations devoted to Blackwell's spirit and history. Okay. Again, this seems rather bland. I think it's less likely that Victoria's parents would bribe the school. Like the Prescott's 100% are, I find it less likely for Victoria, though. I don't know. It's... The reason I say that is that Victoria's parents own an art gallery. Yet Victoria is looking outside of the chase space for her start in photography. Now, that could either be because Victoria herself is like, no, I don't want to rely on my parents. I don't want to be, you know, the daughter of the owners of the Chase space. I want to be Victoria Chase in my own right. So I'm not going to use mummy and daddy's money. I'm not going to use their art gallery. I'm going to go off on my own and I'm going to do it the way every other artist and photographer does. I'm going to send in my work and hope that a gallery will bite. Either that or her parents have outright said, we're not going to do that for you. Like, we're not going to give you a leg up just because you're our daughter. Like, you need to earn it. So either way, that that indicates to me that her parents wouldn't bribe the school. They would expect her to have good grades and shit on her own back. So, mm. yeah, I. it's very bland, but I don't think this is because, you know, Wells has been bribed. I have to make sure Warren doesn't have a criminal background. Hmm. Warren Daniel Graham, uh, born November 20th, uh, 1996. Okay, so he's, uh, he's a year younger than Max. Uh, GPA 4.0, flipping heck. Uh, brief summary. Warren is considered an exemplary student and represents a long tradition of excellence in science at Blackwell. He has the gift, of course, of gabbing... Oh, excuse me he has the gift or curse of gab depending on the faculty some have accused him of playing science pranks but this is not confirmed by his science teacher miss grant we hope warren focuses his academic vision and continues and continues towards his bright future okay that's nice that's nice let's nab this last file sherlock always wanted to say nab Rachel doesn't seem so troubled based on all this. But there's not much here about the police investigation. I was going to say, if I find it interesting that Rachel Ambers is being kept in like a, a sturdy looking case. It's not out and about, you know, within easy reach. Rachel Dawn Amber, uh, born uh, July 22nd, 1994, from Long Beach, California. Okay. Uh, parents... I, I can read that that says Amber, but I can't read those bits. Okay. Uh, GPA 4.0. A brief summary, Rachel Amber is the quintessential student representation of Blackwell Academy. She excels in all of her studies and extracurricular activities, which are numerous. 
Popular with both students and faculty, she has the de facto qualities of leadership, of, excuse me, qualities of scholarship and leadership that is a hallmark of Blackwell's legacy. Her diverse goals include a career in international law and fashion modeling. There is no doubt that Rachel will achieve all of her dreams with Blackwell as the fulcrum. And then, update. Unfortunately, Rachel Amber has stopped attending class for the past month, and she's left no contact with the students or faculty for the past month. Her parents are at, pre are at the present unaware of her whereabouts, and Blackwell hopes for her quick return to continue her academic excellence. And then Rachel Amber's disappearance. Principal Wells, this is Lieutenant Chris Rossi. Just wanted to let you know that Rachel Amber's investigation has officially been closed on our end. We always hope for that one magic clue, but once again, Arcadia Bay covers up another secret. We always keep our eyes and ears open, but that's all we can do from now. Thanks for all your help, Lieutenant Chris Rossi, Arcadia Bay PD. Ooh, so the case has outright been closed. Chloe is going to be devastated by that. That is... I find that interesting that her case would be closed so quickly because here's the thing um if i remember correctly from uh before the storm i have in my head that her dad is like he's like a lawyer or a judge or something he he's like a um he could just be an attorney i don't know but the, the feeling i got was that he was like a very influential lawyer or you know something in that vein you know she rachel amber does come from wealth she's not poor by any stretch of the imagination i don't think her family is as rich as the prescotts or as um you know it, she doesn't have that family history she doesn't have a family crest like the prescotts but she she was very wealthy she came from a wealthy background and if her dad was, you know, in, in the legal profession, I find it so interesting that the police would drop the case as quickly as they have. Especially if he was like, um, what are they called? Um, is, is it district attorney? You know, the, the lawyers that work with the police prosecuting people as opposed to, you know, defending people. I, like, if her family is pretty buddy-buddy with the police, that, that doesn't seem right to me. I, I question that. Man, I don't blame the principal for expelling Chloe. Bad Chloe. Uh, <laughs> Chloe Elizabeth Price, born March 11th, 1994. She was born in Arcadia Bay. Uh, da, da, da. GPA 1.7, that is abysmal. Brief summary, Chloe Price is a problematic student at Blackwell, despite the best efforts of the faculty and administration to guide her academically. Chloe does little homework and is often willfully belligerent to her teachers. She has caused numerous class disruptions with inappropriate comments and rude gestures to fellow students. She was recently suspended for spray painting graffiti in the parking lot. Even though Chloe is an intelligent student with potential, she chooses to squander it on empty rebellion against a non-mandatory institution. Update, Chloe Price is no longer a student at Blackwell. See attached police reports. Chloe, Chloe no, God damn. I think we found everything in here. I should go join Chloe now. We have, however, I, I wasn't reading where people were from on these ones, so I just- Like I'm not gonna read my own personal file. Yeah, uh, Nathan was from Florida, Max is from Arcadia Bay. This file is going to be so spotless, I'll projectile vomit. Yeah, I have to make sure Warren doesn't have a criminal background. He is from Arcadia Bay, okay. I just wanted to check, I was curious. Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to you in a bit, however, again. Ooh, whiskey bottle. Hello. I'd drink too if I was the principal of Blackwell. <laughs> yeah, but... 
he he maybe should be uh drinking at home not in the office maybe max you better come check out these files nathan accuses rachel of bringing drugs on campus and my step troll went along because he thinks rachel was a bad influence on me assholes if david is teaming up with nathan prescott that's a bad sign nathan prescott the third Ooh, he's so money. And you know the Prescott's dropped major bank to bury Nathan's real file. Look, it reads like a rap sheet. Bad grades, teacher complaints, secret probation. But I was expelled? The Prescott's always get their money's worth. Check out that note. Open it. It's just some crazy drawing. It's not a drawing. Look. Rachel in the dark room. Rachel in the dark room. Over and over. That's it. That's fucked up. What does this even mean? Nathan is truly psychotic. I know he has something to do with Rachel missing. Whoa, listen to this. David M. always asks what's going on in my head. David M. always helps me follow those he follows. <laughs> it's pretty cryptic. No, it sounds like they formed some sort of weird team, the Super Hebros. Jesus. David was stalking Kate, hassling me, and now we know he was all over Rachel, too. Oh, we are so going into his garage files. Plus, I'm getting a little paranoid in here. We got our info. Let's bail. But maybe we shouldn't leave without a gift. No, you are not taking the cozy chair. Max, do your powers include mind reading? Or did you just rewind because I tried to steal the chair? Shit, I'm confused. It's the powers of best friendship. I know how you roll. We should definitely get out of here. We pressed our luck enough. Hello, what have we here? Holy shit! Jackpot! Cha-ching! Wow, sir. That's a lot for the handicapped fund. Dude, there's $5,000 here. I could pay Frank back tonight. This will chill him out after you almost, you know, shot him. Are you gonna make a big issue out of this? Or just rewind and take the greenbacks for yourself? I hope you do that instead of lecturing me. Not the handicapped fund! Oh no! Leave the money, steal the money. I know what Max is going to do and I don't want to do it because it's the handicapped fund! That would go towards adding in ramps to make the school wheelchair accessible. Maybe adding an elevator or something inside so that, you know, students in wheelchairs or, you know, other, you know, people who can't get up the stairs easily can get to classes or get to their dorm rooms on the second floor. Oh no. potentially hiring aides for students with because here's the thing handicap that doesn't necessarily mean that you know oh exclusively people in wheelchairs that could go towards uh you know getting specific counselors and school aides you know to help people with learning disabilities you know like to keep them focused in lessons oh no i feel horrific i feel horrific of course Max is going to steal the money, because this is Chloe. This is Chloe asking like, hey, are you going to make a big deal out of this? I could pay Frank back tonight. You know, Frank, who threatened me with a knife, and then you almost shot him, like, like really pissing him off, and, you know, potentially... You know, he, he might want to hurt you now. We can make that all go away with this money. This money from the fucking handicapped fund. <laughs> if it were anyone other than Chloe, she wouldn't do it. But it's Chloe. Chloe is Max's kryptonite. Oh no. Uh, if we say no, then, you know, what did she say? Like, oh, I'd rather you just go back in time and take it for yourself than lecture me. Like, <laughs> I, I really think that Max is like, okay, this, 
Like, this is a bit too much. Like, we, we're stealing from the handicapped fund now. Like, oh my god. But, like, if I lecture her, then she'll be pissed. She won't like me as much. You know, maybe she'll, you know, talk about, like, oh, you remember that time you left me for five years? And I was grieving and you didn't do jack shit despite being my best friend? Yeah, remember that? Oh, yeah, okay. Thanks for not letting me take the money, Max. And I... Max, you just can't deal with that. Oh, God. Frank knows things about Rachel, and he might talk if he's been paid. Right? You are super, Max. And with the leftover dough, I'll take you on a road trip to Portland for the day. We'll stock up on tats, beer, weed, and donuts, and books from Powell's, and strip clubs. Kidding. But you never know. I feel like shit for taking that money. Same. Oh Lord. I just, did you, like she feels like shit, but Chloe was so happy. She was so happy, you know, like, oh, we'll go for a day trip to Portland. And like, oh, we might go to a strip club. Like, oh, she, the things Max would do to see Chloe smile. It's, oh, it's terrible. Ooh, hello. Okay, yeah, so here we have, I would assume maybe Nathan is seeing a school counselor or something and he's drawing these weird images during the sessions. A disciplinary warning report. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Prescott, we regret to inform you that Nathan Prescott has disrupted various classes over the past month, despite repeated warnings and leniency. Due to a crude outburst in Mrs. Hoyden... <gasps> Mrs. Hoyden! Th this is the lady who's on leave because she's depressed! September 17th? Would that match up? A crude outburst. Oh, I... Crude outburst, to me, says sexual harassment. But we're not going to say it's sexual harassment because we don't want to type that out because that's a paper trail in case she fucking sues us. Like Mrs. Hoyder, I mean. Oh... I'm not, I'm not saying that Nathan necessarily did anything. Like, I'm not saying, like, he got his dick out or anything like that. But I'm saying, like, if he said, like, I'm gonna fuck you when no one else is here. Like, something on that level. Like, he, he made, you know, like, it, it's still sexual harassment. If he, if he said something like that to her, I could, I could see her being like, you know, I'm just, I'm out. This is too much for me. This boy is the devil. I can't. Oh, I, I would put money on that's what happened. Maybe not the, the sexual harassment part, but like, what else could a crude outburst be? Like, seriously, what else could that be? It's crude. If it was a violent outburst, then I'd be saying like, oh, we must have tossed a desk across the room. But like, crude implies sexual to me. Ooh, um, let me, let me go over this. Uh, due to a crude outburst in Mrs. Hoyder's intro to literature class on Tuesday, September 17th, Nathan was sent back to his dormitory for the day without a proper write-up for his files. Nathan has enormous potential, but also erratic behaviour patterns that may need supervision beyond Blackwell's ability. The school cannot tolerate these disruptions, so we hope you will discuss this matter with Nathan to impress upon him the severity of this situation. Please see the attached files for the full report. Update expunged record. Yep. Dear Principal Wells, we received a rather outrageous and possibly slanderous letter for somebody in administration accusing Nathan of uncharacteristic erratic behaviour patterns. We're certain this must be a mistake, otherwise we fear that we will take Nathan out of Blackwell to a more prestigious and better funded institution. Please respond with a copy of the expunged disciplinary warning report. Oh, dear. Because here's the thing. It... Oh, it's... He, he tried to nick the tabanga. Um, Nathan very clearly has issues. Severe issues. He, he needs psychological help. He needs counselling. 
Like, more than a school counsellor can do, like, proper counselling, potentially medication. It just... Not only for the sake of everyone else, but also for himself. Because, like, with, with medication and counselling, like, maybe some CBT, the cognitive behaviour therapy, like, he could really flourish. He could be living his life to, you know, to, to the best. But, like, as it is now, he's not. Like, I just... I do I do feel really badly for Nathan. He's being a dick. I don't think he's not being a dick. I don't think he's innocent in anything. But it's very clear that his parents aren't doing jack shit to help him. And he does need... Excuse you. Yet he does need help. He needs some kind of assistance. He should still be held accountable. Just because someone does something whilst they are mentally ill doesn't negate what they did to the other person involved. Like, he needs to be held accountable. He needs to be helped, though. He, he needs help. Blackwell Incident Report, Nathan Prescott. The following is a list of reported incidents involving Nathan Prescott. There seems to be a pattern of outbursts and confrontations, followed by remorse and repentance. We suggest his parents remove him from the school and place him under expert psychological supervision, throwing a desk in class, cursing at his English teacher. Okay, so maybe this is the, the crude behaviour they were talking about. It wasn't... Then again, cursing could be like... He could have been cursing whilst, you know, saying something sexual. We don't know. Lighting firecrackers in the bathroom, stealing school supplies, threatening the school custodian. Not, not, um, is he Samuel? Sa yeah, it's Samuel, not Samuel. Attempted theft of the campus Tobanga statue. <sighs> it, remorse and repentance. I, I feel if, I am not a psychologist. I am, I am not trained in anything. I have a bloody psychology A level. Like, so I am, I am not a trained psychologist or psychiatrist. I, I believe Nathan has, um, I think it's bipolar. It could be something else. However, he goes on these kind of manic highs where his, to be fair, bipolar doesn't necessarily mean violence. The, the key points of bipolar is that you have these manic highs where you feel like you can do everything and you're like, you're, you're more than good. You are amazing. You are on top of the world. And then you have these really dark, depressive episodes like immediately afterwards where you just go to pot and everything is awful. And it... <sighs> hmm... I will say these drawings remind me of um, schizophrenic art that I've seen. Sch schizophrenic art is such a weird, a weird sentence, but you know, art that has been drawn by schizophrenics about the uh, the delusions they have. So it, hmm. Either way, whatever whatever he has, I think potentially it. I think clearly he goes through these violent episodes and then afterwards he returns to a more normal state, in air quotes. He returns to a more normal state, realises what he's done. He's very upset about it. He didn't mean to do this shit. But then because he's not getting help, the cycle continues. It just... He needs to be held responsible for his actions, but he is also a victim in all this. He needs help. His parents aren't helping him. It is better for them, it is easier for them to just ignore the problem and, you know, have his record expunged than put him in therapy because God forbid the neighbours ever realise that the Prescott boy is in therapy. Yeah, Rachel in the dark room. Rachel in the dark room. David Madsen and Nathan Prescott have both come to my office to warn me that Rachel Amber has been a drug mule in Mr. Madsen's talk radio terminology, acting as a front for another local dealer. Considering Rachel's exemplary status, I told David that I would need more concrete proof and he promised he had more to show. 
I was surprised to get an unscheduled visit from Rachel Amber. She seemed quite upset and claimed that David Madsen was following her and taking photographs. David would deny this, and given the questionable company Rachel has been keeping, I'm not certain I can believe her right now. God damn. Uh, what was it they were saying before? Um, David M gets in my head, or David, a David M asks me what's in my head. David M makes make sure I follow those he follows. Now, at, in part of me wants to go into that now. However, however, those are that it's spoiler territory. I need to remember to go into that later because you hear that now and you're like, oh shit, this is creepy as hell. But then with a later context, you're like, oh, I get it. I get like, yeah, I'm Callista. Future Callista, remember. Remember to go over that at some point. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna head on out. Um actually, you know what? Uh, I am I am just about out of time for this episode. In the next one. We leave the school. We will follow Chloe. We've, we've stolen the handicapped fund. I feel horrific, but uh, uh, it's all for Chloe. All for Chloe. But until the next episode, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.